Hi, it's Chris Flanagan. So in front of me here, I've got my latest PC build in Leanne Lee's Land Cool 2. And today I'm going to go through my thoughts on building on this case. I'm also going to go through the benchmarks for this PC and then the bit that everybody's interested in, how it performed thermally. So if you haven't seen my build video, I'll put a link to it in the description. You should probably check that out first before looking at this video. Okay, so what did I think about this case? I absolutely loved it. Um, a case that costs £87 should not look this good. And this PC build just shows just what you can achieve with building in this case. You've got an absolutely gorgeous PC and it makes the case look much more expensive than it actually is. The other thing about this case, I can safely say this was by far the easiest case that I have built in. And this makes it absolutely perfect for a first time builder or a beginner. And I think what makes it so straightforward to build in is the way it opens at the front and the back. You've got two glass panels which swing open and can be removed. Um, at the bottom there's a panel at the front and the panel at the back that fold down. So you've got complete access to build in this case. As well, on either side of the motherboard, at the top and at the bottom, at the right and at the left, you've got large cutouts, which means routing your cables to the motherboard is straightforward. At the back of the case, you've got two large removable panels, which cover all your cables, which makes cable management absolutely straightforward and by far the easiest cable management that I have done in any case. So they're all really important features for when you do your initial PC build. It makes it straightforward. But likewise, if you go back in and want to make any modifications or upgrades in the future, and let's face it, if you've built your own PC, you're gonna to want to do that. And that is also gonna be really straightforward to do. It's not going to be like some of the other builds that I've done in the past where you finally manage to get everything squeezed in and the panels closed and there's no way you ever want to open them again to do an upgrade because of the amount of work involved in doing that. One of the things I really liked about this case was the removable front fan bracket. This meant installing the AIO was really straightforward. Most of the work could be done outside the case. And then the fan bracket with the radiator and fans clipped onto it can be just slid into place and then secured with one screw at the front and one screw at the back. And that made the process really, really straightforward. Another nice thing, and it's going to be a recurrent theme in this case, is the options you've got. There were two different heights that I was able to install that. And I also had the options to install the fans at the front or at the back of that bracket, giving you lots of flexibility to get your build just the way you wanted it. And the front panel has built-in RGB, which I think looks great. I've chosen to go with a solid white option because that's my preferred choice for this case. But you have a whole range of static colours or different flashing modes, or you can have it controlled by your motherboard. And there's a little controller at the top of the case and um, two little buttons there which lets you cycle through the different static or flashing colour modes on the case. I think that's a great location to put that. A lot of other cases they have it hidden, a controller hidden in the back that you're going to have to remove the back panel to get in to change the colours. And it's nice to have that at the front of the case. I think the front panel design is actually really smart. Although the front panel has a built-in RGB, there's no wires actually running from the front panel to the case itself. There's a little electrical connector that when you push the front panel on, it makes contact with the case and that's how the RGB is controlled from the case itself. So I think one of the best things about this case is the number of options it offers. So if your motherboard doesn't have a USB-C header, there's nothing more frustrating than buying a case that does have a USB-C port on the front and a cable that you can plug in. And Leanne Lee have done away with this by making this an added option only. So it costs 12 pounds for a USB-C cable, which I have installed. It's pretty easy to install. 
and it avoids that problem of having a cable that you can't install on your motherboard that you've had to pay an extra price for the case for a feature that you can't use. But should you upgrade your motherboard in the future to one that does have a USB-C cable, you've got a route that you can add it into in the same case just by purchasing an upgrade cable. So I think that's a, a nice way the and Lee have chosen to do it. Again, plenty of options when it comes to hard drive mounting as well. They've got a removable hard drive tray and the option that I chose was to remove it because I'm not using any hard drives in this build. And that's nice that you can remove that. There's other cases where you're stuck leaving the hard drive cage in that you're never going to use. And the fact that I've removed it means there's much more room for air to flow from the front to the back of the case and then up to the GPU. If you do decide to leave that in and use it, it's on a slider that moves from the front to the back and there's a little locking screw on the back so you can have that cage in a place that suits your build. They also have an optional um, back plate that allows you to hot swap your hard drives. Again, as an option, you can pay for it if you want to use it. Likewise, if you don't, you can just get the entry model of the case and avoid paying any extra for that. When it comes to hard drive mounting or SSD mounting, you have plenty of locations to mount them in this case. So for your SATA SSDs, you can have them mounted on display on the back of the case like I chose to do. Or if you don't want them on display, you can mount them behind the little uh, metal back panel. So there's, you can mount two behind the back panel and two on display at the back. And likewise, you can mount your SATA SSDs in the hard drive cage as well if you want to. So plenty of options. Likewise, when it comes on to your GPU, you have loads of options here as well. You can, of course, mount your GPU in the traditional horizontal position, or you can buy the optional um, vertical GPU bracket that's made by Lian Li specifically for this case, like I chose to do. And I think this Strix card looks great in vertical orientation. One of the nice things about the bracket, as like I've said, it's made specifically for this case. So that means the cutout where the GPU goes, it fits completely, so there's no gaps at all. Something you're not going to get with a bracket that's not made specifically for this case. And the other nice thing about that is you know it's going to fit, you know that you're going to be able to fit fans below it because it's made specifically for this case. So the vertical GPU bracket can be mounted in two different locations. You can mount it in the high position like I have it here, which allows two fans to be installed below it. Or you can mount it further lower down, which is going to mean you're going to have more room above it for a CPU cooler, which is going to be particularly important should you want to go down the air cooled route. And another nice thing about the bracket is it means the GPU is mounted quite far back in the case, so your fans aren't going to be up against that front glass panel, so they're going to have no problem getting plenty of airflow. Likewise with the fans, there's lots of options here as well. Um, you can get a total of eight fans in the case. Um, up top, you can actually install two 140 millimeter fans or 120 millimeter like I have done, and all the other fan mounts are 120 millimeter. And a lot of those fan mounts, there's quite a bit of flexibility of where you can slide the fans to. So you can get them in a position that's going to suit your build. Okay, so anytime you build a PC in a case, you learn a lot from doing the build. And if you're going to go and build in the case again, there's quite often steps you would do in a different order because you run into problems. And doing them in a different order the second time, you'll avoid those problems. Like I've said, building in this case was really straightforward and there was actually only one step that I would change and do slightly differently. So I hadn't started by installing this rear fan and then tried to install the vertical GPU afterwards. And when I was trying to tighten the thumb screws to secure the GPU in place, it was difficult with this um, fan already installed. So I ended up having to remove the fan, tighten the thumb screws and then put the fan back in. So I think if you are going with a vertical GPU in this case, make sure you leave installing the rear fan until the end of the build. 
Okay, so moving on to look at some of the negatives of this case, and I had to think quite hard about these because there's, there's definitely a lot of positives and only a few negatives. But most of the negatives come down to build quality. And how many of those you can forgive, uh, given the low price of this case, I'll leave up to you. But when you think, if you were to add in all the options that Lee and Lee offer, you're certainly up to a mid-range case and you're up to similar quote price for what I paid for my Lian Li PCO11 Dynamic and certainly the build quality of this case is not as good as that case. Okay, so what were the issues that I experienced with build quality? So like I said, I had to remove the rear fan after installing it, um, tighten the thumb screws in the GPU and then reinstall it. But during that process, there was paint already starting to flake off at the back of the case from where the screws had changed position slightly. As well as that, the thumb screws that were used to secure the GPU in place, the rubber on them was of quite poor quality and it was very irregular and coming off in places. So it just was not the same quality that I was getting with my PC. 11 dynamic. As well as that, there's a bracket that you need to rotate round if you're using an EATX motherboard like I was. And when I tried to unscrew the screw, the thread came off the screw and I ended up having to drill that screw out. And I know that can happen, but um, again, if you're using cheap screws, it's much more likely to be a problem. Although that was the only screw that I had an issue with in the case. Again, the glass panels at the front and rear of the case are held closed with magnets. And the magnetic connection at the front of the case is definitely much stronger than the one on the back on this particular case. Because when I'm moving the case, the back panel quite often swings open. And obviously there's a risk of that um, smashing if it hits something when it swings open. And there's no way at all to secure the gas panels in the closed position which I think would have been a nice feature to have, particularly for transporting the case. The final thing, um, it's not really a, an issue with build quality, but it's just something I would like to have seen. At the front of the case here, there's a little bracket that is removable. You leave it on if you're just using fans at the front of the case, but if you're gonna use a radiator, you have to remove it to make space for the radiator. And the problem is if you use a really slim radiator um, and fans on an AO, like I've done, there's quite a bit of space here at the front. And if you look down there, you can see all the cables at the bottom of the case. Um, the bracket that you take off is just one piece of metal. And I think if they had that, made that bracket split into two or three pieces that you could put back on, uh, maybe put half the bracket or a third of the bracket back on to cover part of this space, it would have hidden those cables. So that would be a nice feature I would like to see in a future upgrade to the case. But by far the positives of this case really dwarf any of the negatives. And again, you could argue at the price you're paying, this is the quality that you would expect from the case. So I absolutely love the case. Building in it was a dream. How did the PC perform? So let's go on and look at some of the benchmarks. So in Cinebench, we got a score of 7,116. Next benchmark, looking at the GPU, we went on to the Unigen Heaven benchmark using the settings that you can see on the screen. So here we got a total score of 4,561 with an average frames per second of 181.1. Minimum frames per second were 51.8 and maximum of 355.8. Next thing went on to look at the Time Spy benchmark and a total score here of 14,169. And that was split up to 14,385 for a graphics score and 13,059 for the CPU score. Next thing I looked at was Assassin's Creed using the built-in benchmark at 3,440 by 1440 using the settings again that you can see on your screen. So here we had an average frames per second of 76 
minimum of 38 and max of 165. And again, reducing the resolution down to 1920 by 1080 and the graphics quality down to high, we got 108 frames per second on average, minimum of 49 and a max of 209. Okay, going on to look at the thermals. So there's a few things to mention before I give you the results. Uh, the first is that I've left the PC mostly at stock. Um, the only thing that I have modified is I've set the RAM to 3600 megahertz, but there's no other overclocking done on the PC. Likewise, all the fan curves are as stock. They're running on the smart fan mode on the motherboard and the AIO pump is running at 100% as it comes at stock. Uh, the ambient temperature was 20 degrees when I was doing the thermal testing. Okay, so there was three things that I did. The first thing, I left the PC running in Windows for half an hour with no programs running in the background, and I recorded the minimum CPU and GPU temperatures during this period, and that was the idle temperature. The next thing I did was I played Assassin's Creed Odyssey for 30 minutes and I recorded the maximum CPU and maximum GPU temperature during that 30 minute period. The final thing that I did was I used an IDA 64 stability test where I had selected every option to stress all the components on the PC. I let that run for half an hour and recorded the maximum CPU and GPU temperature during that period. Okay, so going on to look at the temperatures during these tests. So during the idle phase, the minimum CPU temperature was 36 and the minimum GPU temperature was 32. During the 30 minutes of gaming, the max CPU temperature was 68 and the max GPU temperature was 70. And during the 30 minute IDA 64 stress test, the max CPU temperature was 87 and the max GPU temperature was 69. So those of you who have watched some of my other PC builds may notice that a lot of the hardware I have in this system is very similar to a previous PC build that I did and that was my Lian Li PC-011 dynamic build. It had the same GPU, the same CPU, the same AIO, the same fans, the same M.2 SSDs, the same RAM. So it'll be quite interesting to compare the results um, between the two PCs to give a feel for how well the Lancool 2 is working with thermals. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, importantly, I did quite a bit of testing in the PC-011 Dynamic and I went through a range of different configurations until I found the one that worked really well and gave very good temperatures. Okay, so how did those temps in the Lancool 2 compare to the best temps that I was able to get in the PC-011 Dynamic using the same hardware? Important to mention, I did have one extra fan in the PC-011 Dynamic, but I've maxed out the fan locations in each of these cases. So at idle, the minimum CPU temperature in the Lancool 2 was 36 compared to 35 in the PC-011 Dynamic. Minimum GPU temperature, 32 in the Lancool 2, compared to 30 in the PC-011 Dynamic. So very slightly better idle temperatures in the PC-011 Dynamic. Um, 30 minutes of gaming um, in the Lancool 2, the max CPU temperature was 68, compared to being 1 degree lower at 67 in the PC-011 Dynamic. Slightly different story with the GPU. GPU, the max temperatures during 30 minutes of gaming in the Lancool 2 was 70, whereas in the PC-011 Dynamic it was 5 degrees higher at 75. During the IDA 64 test it was a similar story with the CPU being slightly hotter in the Lancool 2 at 87 degrees compared to 84 in the PC-011 Dynamic, where again there was a 5 degree difference in the GPU temperatures again being cooler in the Lancool 2 at 69 compared to 74 in the PC-011 
dynamic. Okay, so I'm not really surprised by these temperatures because I think I can explain the differences in both the CPU and the GPU temperatures between the two cases. So in the PCO11 dynamic, I had my AIO on the top as an intake. And before a lot of you become outraged as to why I had done this, I'm going to put a link to my best fan configuration for the PCO11 dynamic uh, case in the description and have a look at that before you drop me a comment about why this was such a bad idea. I tested it in so many different positions and although I didn't expect this position to give the best temperatures, it by far outperformed any other fan and AO configuration in this case. Why it was better than the Lancol 2 here I think is because the top of the PCO11 dynamic there's very little restriction to airflow, it's mostly just an open panel. Whereas in the Lancol 2, your airflow is restricted to two slots at the side of the front panel and the middle of the front panel is solid. So I think that slight limitation in airflow um, with the Lancol 2 compared to the PCO11 dynamic can explain why the CPU was running slightly hotter in the Lancol 2 compared to the PCO11 dynamic. Likewise, if you look at the two pictures um, side by side, the, the differences are in the Lancol 2, I had the GPU in a vertical orientation, whereas in the PCO11 dynamic, it was in a horizontal location. But in below um, the graphics card in the PCO11 dynamic, I had installed the M.2 expander card. And as well, on top of the GPU, um, I had an RGB backplate. So I think both of these were probably impairing airflow when around the GPU, particularly the M.2 expander card in underneath was probably blocking the fan on the left of the GPU. Um, and I'm sure the um, backplate on the top didn't help with cooling either. And that probably explains the five degree difference in temperatures rather than the um, vertical orientation in the Lancol 2, although I would require a bit more testing just to confirm that theory. Okay, so I think to sum up, um, I absolutely love this build. Really straightforward to do, and I think it looks great. And I think it shows the real potential of this case. And again, the temperatures in this case are very acceptable when you've got all the fans and AAO maxed out. So really happy with the build. I'm not finished yet with this case. I have a few other ideas and I'll be back with videos over the coming weeks with a few different tweaks and different um, takes on this case. So if you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe and turn on the bell for notifications so you'll get notified when I do make those update videos on this case. Thanks for watching.